What are we going to do today, huh? Want to do something fun? You know, you don't have to stay out here. You can go to the house. But I'm glad you're here. So today, this is my last set of stainless steel canisters that Walmart used to sell. And uh, this is the last set, and this is the last ring I have for it. This ring goes over here, but I gotta do a little bit of trimming on the inside. I got a, a angle grinder that I'm gonna get in here and open this up just, I mean, like a sixteenth of an inch and it'll fit over here, over this. So here's what I got. Uh, I'm gonna make a wood gas stove. I've made lots of them over the years. And uh, the last one I made out of these canisters, which for some reason is the one that I've gotten the most views on, but that one was a gift and I never uh, burned, I never cooked in it. And people complain, even though I said clearly in the video, that this was a gift. People are saying, how come you didn't cook on it, man? And I just got so tired of saying, uh, I have like a dozen or more videos of me cooking on these. This is the only one I didn't cook on and I said it was a gift. So, you know, <laughs> anyway, I just don't even answer them anymore. So anyway, I'm gonna cook on this, okay? I'm gonna build this today and I don't know if I can actually cook on it today, because again, we're having another day of unbelievable high winds. This is like four days in a row we've had these extreme winds. So anyway, let me uh, let me get started. I've got this sort of marked out, and uh, I, I'm not going to show you me doing every little step because that's just be too long a video. So what I've got is this marked off. I'm going to drill four holes and a center hole. And these four holes here will be the legs, and the center hole will hold this in, and there'll be a wing nut on the bottom. You can disassemble them if you want to, but, uh, you know, I don't see why you would ever need to. If you, Maybe if you wanted to clean it out, I don't know. So let me start getting my holes drilled on this, and then when I drill my holes on this, I'll explain why the holes are going where they're going, and uh, one step at a time, I'll, I'll do it and then explain why I did. So right now, I'm gonna drill these leg holes, the center hole, and then here, I've got some holes that are three quarters of an inch, I believe. Yeah. I think they're three quarters. Yeah, close enough to three quarters to call it that. And these are gonna be three quarter inch holes about centered about, oh, an inch and a quarter off the bottom. And uh, I'll tell you that why when I get to it. Let me get the holes drilled. All right, I got those holes drilled. I got these holes marked. And uh, I can get them on the drill press here. You know what, maybe I'll set the tri, these holes won't take that long to drill. I'll uh, set the tripod off, up, be right back. And plus I gotta get a pair of gloves on this hand because the chips that get thrown off of that are pretty hot. Alrighty, I think this will work. I got, the, I got the wrong bit in here. I'll be right back. Good Lord. Come on.
right, I gotta uh, clean up the outside of these holes so I don't get cut. I'm gonna do the same to the inside. Be right back. All right, I am in my knife shop using my die grinder, trying to get this ring to, to fit. It almost fits. I got just a little bit of wallering out in here and uh, I think it'll slide right on. All right, back to the other shop. <sighs> that got hot, I won't be able to carry that. Now, I'm gonna be drilling little tiny holes around this. This is the inner can, the inner canister, and I'm gonna mark these holes, geez, about uh, three eighths of an inch apart. I'm gonna do that all the way around. All right, these are quarter inch holes, and uh, I'm gonna, before I put this all together, I'm gonna to explain all the holes. So here we go.
chain. Well, there you go. This is an eighth inch. You know, I won't know if you skip ahead. Okay, I drilled these holes in the top flange. Let me just say uh, a couple of things while I'm getting these uh, pot standoffs. This is the top flange, right? This goes in here, and uh, this is where you would set your pot on this. So uh, let me get some pot standoffs bolted in here. And... Uh, tell you what I think I know. I may have to waller these out. Yeah. Give me just a second. Good. Okay. First, I want to tell you a funny one. Not long ago, well, actually, I say not long ago, and it's actually been a pretty good, a pretty good bit ago. You know, when the older you get, not long ago. Could I'm gonna have to get a, another 7 16ths. Hold on. Let's 
so anyway, I go to the dentist and uh, he's trying to sell me on getting my teeth fixed. And back then, I think it was, I think it was 06. I'll pick that up later. I don't want to bend over right now. Back then, the amount he was talking was like, you know, 15 grand. Fuck. And uh, I think I just said F-bomb, sorry. And uh, I said, man, I can't afford that kind of money. You know, that's for that kind of money. And he said, well, don't you want a pretty smile? And I looked at him like, man, the last thing in the world I care about at this point in my life is having a pretty smile. So I told him, I said, no, I, I can't afford that kind of money, man. And he said, well, you drove up here on a $30,000 motorcycle, which is true. So I had to tell him, well, I want a $30,000 motorcycle. I don't give a single crap about having a pretty smile. So uh, there's that. <laughs> yeah, he tried to shame me into spend an insane amount of money what i think you know some other people may want to have pretty teeth but at that stage of my life i was beyond caring about pretty teeth and more about enjoying the the remnants of my life however long that may be and the fact that i've lived lived this long is a surprise sometimes well, anyway that was funny he got ugly with me he tried to shame me into spending an insane amount of money on teeth which people could say that's an insane amount of money for a motorcycle and quite possibly that's true but okay these are the pot stand up but i don't want to make okay first time all right i'm gonna one of these may be a little long Actually, I think this one's a little short. Can you hear that stinking wind, man? It will not stop. Oh. Unbelievable. not not that important but if you're gonna do it you're gonna do it right huh which leads me to this uh, this does not have to be perfect the holes I'm not gonna keep messing with that okay yes I am this one looks like it's not quite out enough Almost better than I should have just left well enough alone. So, uh, let me explain a little bit about this wood gas stove and what it's called. Uh, it's called a top load updraft T LUD. And uh, the way it works is burning wood creates a gas. And this gas that burning wood is cre creates does not all burn up at the fire. The gas raises up and 99 times out of 100 in an open fire or most wood stoves are in a fireplace that gas just dissipates. It, it, it goes up with the smoke and disappears. So what a tea lud does, and several, and, and actually most modern stoves now use this principle as well. It reburns 
the gas that is created by the burning wood, and that is called pyrolysis. And uh, let's let get this in here. Okay. Let me see. Let me see just what you can see. I'm gonna back it up just a little bit for my demonstration, y'all. Okay, here's where your fire would be in the bottom of here. You, this is called a top load. You load your fire, your wood in there. You catch it on fire. The, you know, and it generally occurs down here. And what happens is oxygen comes in these holes. It comes in these holes, and you know the fire is consumes the oxygen. But what also happens is air comes in these holes which is why these are so much bigger than these. And it comes up the side of this. It comes up, it comes in the big holes. It goes in here and some of it comes up the side of this and re-enters through these holes, these holes. And what it does is combine with the gas that's not burned at the level of the fire and it, it burns. And little tiny flames come out here, and you can tell it's working when the flames start up here. So you're having a complete and total burn of, uh, you're using far, far less combustible material, biomass, whether that be wood or dried cow dung or pine cones or grass. Uh, any biomass that's uh, flammable will work. And, uh, that's how uh, wood gas stoves work. It, it, it burnt, that's why it's called wood gas stove. It creates a gas down here at the fire. The gas rises up, the air comes in here and here and it's burned. And that's, uh, I mean, it, it reaches incredible temperatures. So uh, now I'm going to assemble this. Uh, first, okay, this is where your pot would go. These are called pot standoffs and also these nuts help hold it centered in this but uh what i got to do is all these nuts i got to make sure that they're in the right direction or else uh they won't fit right gonna be noisy. Alright, I'm gonna have to loosen these up again. I won't make you watch all that. I gotta fit fit this to the top. And what these nuts do is you gotta have the flat of the nut aimed out where it comes in contact with it. And I don't. And now I've tightened them up too tight. So let me turn you off and fix that. All right, I got it very close. So what I'm gonna do now is put the legs on. I'll do this with my left. Get a couple of washers. So I'll just bring the whole bucket with me.
don't think it's the nut. I think it's the bolt. Oh, darn it. There we go. See, you need bigger washers because they're not fitting over that well enough. So I'll shut you off. I'll get this, I'll get this right in a minute. Alright, I got the, the basic thing ready to go. I gotta do a couple things, but I gotta assemble this first. So here we go. There's the inner can. Ox oxygen comes in here, air comes in here goes in here it also comes up the side I probably had this held up to guy enters these holes here and it reburns it mixes with the gas and it reburns up there so let me uh, get this in the hole okay I've got that that's a three inch carriage bolt that goes through the hole right here and this is what holds everything together smaller washer. I'm going to get this tight, but not all as tight, not completely tight. pretty tight but what I'm going to do is tap on these to make sure they're all seated and I'm going to give this a couple of more a couple more turns all right now don't touch that dial now I got to spread these legs out a little bit uh yeah, this will work. I'm turn it over. See if it's fairly. It is. There we go. A wood gas stove. Now. Let's go cook on it. Oh, and by the way, I've made these out of soup cans, coffee cans. Uh, you can make them out of anything. It don't have to be these, these here. Let's give you a look down inside there. That's what it looks like. Okay. Any questions? Leave them in the comment section below. Well, I was sitting here. I drank a cup of coffee. Headed my dogs. Ugh. And, uh, you know, I quit making these because you couldn't get the canisters anymore. Well, guess what? I found the canisters. I found them on Amazon. I will leave a link. The very first thing in the description will be a link to these canisters. Now, I used to make these a lot. And I give them away. I made them and give them away as subscriber gifts. And uh, then I could not find the canister sets anymore. So I didn't make them for years and years. I didn't make them. This was my very last set. Well, I found them again, and uh, they're the cheapest on Amazon. I checked Walmart. They're 84 bucks at Walmart, 
at Wayfair, they're about that. At Home Depot, they're like 179. I don't know why Home Depot would even sell them. But on Amazon, I think they were like 38 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. And uh, you know, when I was buying them, there were 20 bucks and that has been, oh God, 10 years ago? Eight, eight years ago? I don't know. Maybe not quite that long ago, but you know how everything has... Anyway, I found them. So what I'm going to do is light a fire in this right here. I'm going to, you know, sit here. It's too windy. Uh, this is sort of protected under here. And uh, there's no... Get out, baby. Get down. There's nowhere up by my house. So, <clears throat> so uh, I might... <laughs> Here's the deal, I'm not gonna actually cook on it cause I got nothing to cook, you know? And I don't wanna put a fry pan, I don't have any fry pans that I don't wanna, if you cook on a fire, basically you gotta have a dedicated fry pan cause the smoke, the fire, you can't bring a, a fry pan that you use on a fire and use it in your house or your wife will shoot you. So you got to have a dedicated frying pan and I don't have one and I don't feel like ruining one just for the sake of a video. So in this playlist, it's either, it's either off grid cooking playlist or wood gas cooking playlist. There's plenty of videos and I mean plenty of videos of me cooking on wood gas stoves just like this. So uh, I'm gonna light this and I'll show you when the blue flames start coming in around here, that's when it's the most interesting. So let me get some sticks and uh, I just got a little piece of paper towel in there to get this started. Let me go do that. I wanted to show you this before the wind picks back up. Do you see the little flames coming out here? I, I got a little too much wood in here. And I just started, so when it warms up, you'll have, actually, the wind is blowing pretty hard, as you can see, it's blowing that away from south to north. But uh, that's the wood gas burning right at the top of this stove. And that's all I did was find some sticks laying around in the yard. When this gets going good, I'll, I'll bring you back. Actually, my wife, I did find a pan and what I did was cover the bottom with tin foil, aluminum foil, <clears throat> and uh, I'll cook a couple of eggs in it just so you can see how that's working now with no wind. All that wood gas is burning up right at those holes at the top of the inner canister. And really, the uh, flames would not normally be shooting up this high, but I uh, just started it, and I gotta get some of that wood caught up on the bottom. Don't get close, Breezy, it's hot.
I gotta throw some more wood in there. I uh, I let it burn down too low when I went to the house to get this this pan here. I give it a minute. I didn't bring a knife, a fork, a plate, nothing. So I'm gonna eat these right out of the fry pan using my mm, using my spatula. I have cooked, uh, oh, that's hot. Good Lord, that's hot. I have uh, fried chicken over one of these, and that's back there. I think it was maybe chicken strips, not chicken, you know, quarters or nothing like that. Uh, had a cast iron skillet and some grease in it, and I fried some chicken strips. And I've cooked hamburg patties over one just like this. And one time, <laughs> I made a forced air. What I did was take a 12-volt computer fan and hook it up to a, a little battery. And uh, my God, that thing was like a forge. Okay. Alrighty, that's the wood gas stove. Worked great. Uh, it's a little, little easier to use when it's not so windy, but uh, you saw the action that I was talking about where the, the gas to, that does not get burned at the bottom of the fire, but it's created and basically it's waste. It gets burned at the top of the fire when you recirculate some air and mix it, mix it with some oxygen at the top. Pretty neat thing it's what they call a complete burn all right i'm going to finish that off and uh, i'll leave a link in the description the very first link you see will be uh right to them canisters just in case you wanted to make one and that's a little bit of coals that are left hey 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 that's my egg <laughs>